Here we have the Launchpad Interactive Shooting Gallery by Hexbug for the Nano V2 Gravity Defying Robotic Creatures. Everything on this table that you see here, including this green Hexbug Nano V2, is included in the box set. Which includes, now I've set it all up, a swiveling base that you can actually launch Hexbug Nanos into the air. So not only do they climb and do they crawl, they now fly. Now I actually managed to get that into the goal, that's one of the shortest height goals which is easier but what you'd normally do is have him buzzing around let's say he returned to the top here now of course when he's on camera i'm not going to be able to do it but the hexbug v2 can absolutely climb these tubes he's climbing up here as well he's having a nosy around now the design is you don't get them coming out this way because the idea is you're meant to be firing them into the hole and they're going to return to you so you fire them into the hole they climb down upside down or otherwise buzz 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 now they do actually self right okay, depending on how, how strong the battery is and how quick that happens and how patient you are, they return to the centre, you aim, I didn't do a very good aim, and you fire. Now I'm going to do a lot more close up detail in the video to see you, so you can see me firing this Hexbug Nano into the targets. I've also got additional Hexbug Nano V2s, so if you happen to buy extra sets, they come with both the bug, fully loaded with the battery, and a bit more track, and what I mean by a bit more track, you get another plastic nozzle in which you can, with the interchangeable, clicky, gribby lugs, plug and play additional tr additional track. Now what's particularly snazzy about this set is the neon, and as you can see under this bright light, all these orange track pieces almost glow, and they've got a really good neon light. The way that they catch the light is really quite fantastic, much more vivid than even the uh, rotating launch pad orange that we got down here. Just to quickly show you what I mean, if I were in particularly interested in, let's just take the top off, extending the height to make it particularly hard. That's a fixed piece, by the way. That's the shoot goal. It's one of the special pieces in this set. And I wanted to extend the height of this particular piece by adding a piece of track. I can just click it in and quite quickly, I've got a ridiculously tall goal here on the left, which who knows, am I going to be able to manage to get a, a hex bug fly that high? Let's see. Looking more closely at the launch pad, as I explained, it's got a very smooth, twistable table. Looks a little bit like the old day steam trains where they uh, changed trains onto different points of track. It's very ruggedly built, to be honest, you really can thump that and, uh, you know, event some of your energy. The pad that it actually goes into is slightly recessed, so once the hex bug naturally falls in, he's then going to be stuck, he might be halfway in or whatever. Now obviously if he lands like that, it's going to be a very uncomfortable and probably fr fruitless flight, but um, it'll, it's up to you to then do a little tip like that to get the hex bug to stay on the track, depending on how you're playing the game. So there's no real defined rules in this, and it's very much how you want to play it. So let's get this buzzing again, and I will... I'm going to start with a nice easy one, I'm actually going to put him right in the middle, I'm going to aim for the short target. And I missed, okay, he's out of the track, up to you again what rules you're playing, whether you can then just pick it up like I'm doing and pop him into play, or whether you have to actually make him climb and do the hard work and come in a little bit more randomly, obviously when he does, you're less likely to get a good launch. Now, there's me trying again. Now, that isn't the idea, I've got him to go up there, but uh, he's climbing on the inside, so sorry guy, down you go, or I could just grab him. Easy enough to get my hand into there, it's got quite a lot of room. So overshot a little bit, a little bit to the left. He's gonna climb again. <laughs> he likes to show off. These guys, we have to climb and run random. Oh, he's going down and run randomly. He's gone down upside down. Let's again just speed him up coming up. He's dancing all over the place. He's excited and probably confused. But there we go. I've got him through the low height target there and uh, I think it's time for me to get him to far, far off into one of the bigger, further away ones, and let's see how I do as I continue on to the next height target, onto the medium target. And as you can see, you really can completely control where it goes and how far you fire, very much based on how heavy and hard you push and how sharp you push the plunger button. Okay, I've zoomed right into one of the targets, and let's see how good I am at getting the hex bug into this target. Not bad, close, not good enough. Now you're gonna see me cheating a little bit here because of course, when the hex bug doesn't stay in play, I'm just picking it up and putting it straight back into my launch pad, which depending on how you want to play the game, 
is absolutely fine. Oh, yes. Okay, so there we have the Nano in one of the targets. He's going to look, look around. He's uh, definitely wants to uh, show off as he turns around, climbs down the tube, and of course comes back to the launch pad only to be thrown back up again. And I missed, but you get the idea. Couple of points, if like me, you've got other Nano V2 or indeed the original Nano track, it's all fully compatible. So this curve here and this length here is exactly the same as you'll see in other Nano V2 packs and sets, as well as this unit here, this is white length is exactly the same set as a lot of the original Nano V1 just happened to grey lengths of track. So this is interesting, this has some interesting shapes and curves on it. This is the launch pad, but again, very easy to integrate with other things. The only thing that's really special, I guess, apart from the launch pad, are these goal areas where this is molded into one piece. So this isn't actually removable. So this kind of goal stroke target, that's one piece. Now you can have it at different heights, and if you wanted to, you could rig it, you could rig it so that you could have this way back yonder. Let's just quickly clip this in to show you what I mean. So if you wanted to stagger and extend your set and have a, another target further away for the long shot that you're particularly uh, specialising in, you absolutely can do that. But you just might want to use a couple of the uh, supports to uh, help take the weight. Because as it is with all the V2 track, you really need to make sure your joins are good and that the click's solid and that your joints are, you know, you're careful the joints, you squeeze them and removing them and you make sure that the clip is good solid grip state so that you get very few gaps and issues with the gaps because if you do then the v2 bugs will have problems climbing and uh, you don't want that it, it sort of you know unsettles the play and the smooth of the play okay so not only can you integrate other track you can also integrate other bugs and it very much depends on what rule and game ideas that you've got and i'm going to just talk through a couple that i've thought of myself okay so this is very much a free play game there's no rules so what you do with your one bug you can do with many but not only can i have it buzzing around and i can decide that i have to try to keep it in place if i do miss that's it my turn's over so i might say well i've only got one bug so i've got a launch press so i've got to be very careful very gingerly and if i get it out of play and maybe you set an area maybe you have a little circle maybe you you put a hula hoop ring around this play area on your table because it not only does it define an area, it also helps keep your hex bugs, let's say, at hand. Because if they do fall on the floor, which they're going to, you're going to want to quickly grab them and put them back into play. And that is because, except when it comes down this way, you're going to be wanting to launch this and to grab your bug, pop it back in the launcher, launch it again, grab your bug, put it back in the launcher. Now with one bug, it's going to be quite frenetic play because a lot of the time this is going to be going on the table, on, on, on the table, on the floor, could be going all over the place. And that's absolutely fine. If you have an idea where you say, right guys, you've got 60 seconds and you've got to get as many goals as you can with your one bug in 60 seconds. And if it goes out of play on the floor, you've got to run and go and grab it. So you get some quite fun, energetic, energetic fun trying to capture these guys. You might decide that the different height goals have got different scores you might say simply put that the low one here is the easiest it is by the way but you can actually say that's five points the medium height one is 10 points and the big tall one is 25 points so it's all about risk because to get the bug to fly as high as you need to, to get that tall one you're pushing it really hard and if you miss boy will it fly miles i've actually had to shoot into my kitchen and i had to go running for it there it goes. Now, out of play. I've now got to go and find that bug. But that's one of the options. Now, of course, I've got other bugs here, so let's pop another green bug in. Now, what you could say then also, if you've got more bugs, you could say you have three bugs in play at the beginning. So you can have up to three bugs in, let's say. And they can be just wandering around and you've got to wait for them to get into your trap, except when they go out and when, of course, you grab them. And it might be, you've got to try to, in order, do a small, a medium, and a tall. And unless you get them in that order, and you've only got a certain time limit, you haven't really succeeded. So there's loads of ideas you can do. I'm just not able to get this one. There we go, up. Let's go for the tall one again. Hopefully I don't get another one completely out of play. Completely missed. And I think something like a hula hoop. Now I've obviously got a backdrop where the, uh, the bugs are hitting against, so most of the time, unless I go absolutely crazy, and I have to shoot over, or oh, maybe two feet, almost a meter, 
I'm can, I can actually quickly grab in my arm's, arm's reach each of the bugs. But that might not be what you want to do. You might want to actually deliberately do it so that you've got a team of three and maybe, if you're really lucky, you've got two of these sets and you have a face-off. You've got them at each end of the table. You have three each. And yeah, you're trying to get your goals. You've got somebody trying to count the goals. You've got a five minute playoff. And each time what you're doing is you're firing and you're trying not to fire too far because if this goes over the halfway through the table, then your, comp your opponent can grab one of your bugs and he's now got four bugs in his team. You've only got two. So he can score faster whilst you're scoring slower. So with that five minute time limit, you're hoping he's also, whoa, overshot. So you make sure that the middle target, the, the, the high scoring target is in the middle, pointing at each other. So you've got firing almost like catapults and trebuchets in the olden days and you're trying to fire things into your own targets catching scores it's, it's almost like a mad max situation so great ideas you've got to come up with your own ideas this is this, this is this is a toy facility that lets you come up with your own ideas and your own game ideas and for that it's brilliant as it is out of the box yeah you've got you can see everything you've got it's really simple you can absolutely play with this you probably do want more than one bug and you probably do want to come up with some other ideas but i'm also going to integrate this with other sets so i'm going to have other hex cells in and around the area. I might have a, a, a black hole modification where as I miss and shoot the bugs up to a certain point, if my shoot falls short and the bug falls into the black hole, that's it, out of the game, out of play. So I could be losing my bugs because my risk going for the high, high scoring goal has got the biggest penalty because I've now got these bugs out of play. And I might play safer aiming for the, the more narrow the, the lower, easier targets that I've got here available to me. And again, it's a scoring system. Depending on how many bugs you've got, you don't need 10, 12 bugs like I've got here. One bug is all you need, but you've got to then put a little bit more energy into it and a little bit more skill. You might have a game where you can only, again, this is a timer, how quickly can you go low, medium, high? You have to get first, then second, then third. And if you miss, you've got to start again. So you've got to go low, medium, high. How, how quick can you do that? Maybe it takes you two minutes of firing to get the bug into that area, into that order, without a miss in between. That again, how quick can you beat your own time? So you don't have to. Okay, when I uh, originally bought this set, I thought maybe there's not enough here to play on its own as a standalone set. And I was looking at purely to integrate all these extra new features and the new goals, etc., with my existing sets. And I thought any set with any one Hexbug Nano, that's all about launching bugs into goals can't be enough on its own. You're going to want loads of extras, but actually I think I'm wrong. I think this as a standalone set is actually quite good. I've really enjoyed myself. I've actually enjoyed thinking up how to play a good game, a fun game with one Hexbug Nano, and it's actually more interactive than any other Hexbug Nano V2 game I've actually come up with. So it's really good fun. This kind of re reminds me a little bit of how the Great Grey Shark changed the Hexbug Aquabot 2 fish from a passive kind of game sport into a more active sport. And this is really great fun. And I can imagine kids running around, having a hoot, trying to find and capture their bug because it's flown over the, the play area and off the table. And actually that's quite good fun. These things are really quite rugged. They're robust, they're rubbery. You can bounce around the place and they really are quite tough. And this game really shows that off and puts that to great advantage. Absolutely love it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to like, subscribe and comment. You know the video's over, right? What, you want me to get the bug up that really tall? I don't think I can. I'm not sure I can make it fly that high. I was perhaps a little bit overconfident when I uh, said it at the beginning, because every time I shoot a bug high, it goes right over and into another room. I think I need to have this a little bit longer. Whoa, that yellow one nearly went in. Oh. Bug. That was close. Do you know, if I can't do it before I run out of bugs, I think I'm going to call me oh, a failure. I was going to say I'm a failure. I was down to my last two bugs. I've only got so many hex bug V2s. Okay, grey bug wasn't turned on, but you get the point. The green guy would love to have another go. And uh, let's see if I can do it with a turned on bug. No, nope, but he's bounced back. I like it when they bounce back. Bouncing back means they want to have another go. No way I was going to do two, but I got one in. So I think I'm going to pat myself on the back and say again, thank you for watching and hanging around.
really the video's over now guys